In the near future, Earth will sustain so much damage from nuclear war, deforestation, and climate change that most cities will gradually collapse. In addition to a severe oxygen deficit, there is a scarcity of food and electricity. One of the few cities still standing by 2067 is in Australia, and it has survived because of synthetic oxygen. But this contaminated oxygen makes people sick giving rise to a condition called the sickness. As utility workers, Jude, Ethan White's best friend, and he work together to stabilize the neutral reactor and restore power to the city. Their supervisor scans them at the end of the workday to make sure everyone is still in good health. When a coworker cancels his shift for the following day, Ethan does the shift in order to accrue additional oxygen credits. The unfortunate man is nevertheless fired by the employer. While traveling home, Ethan witnesses a demonstrator, arguing that oxygen should not be considered a luxury, and that people should make sacrifices for future generations. The sacked worker, who is in need of employment because his children are ill, approaches Ethan as others ignore him. A dispute breaks out, but is cut short as the protester suddenly catches fire. Ethan learns later at home via the news that the protester carried out the action in remembrance of the sole remaining plant. The paper also highlights the rising number of illnesses related deaths, and Chronicorps, the firm that produces oxygen pledged to find a cure. But since they fear that humanity will soon go extinct, they keep protesting. Ethan switches off the TV when the reporter begins discussing the deceased lead scientist for the crony cops, Richard, his father. Ethan gives his wife Xanth a fresh oxygen mask when she comes at that same moment. Xanth tells Ethan that she's okay, even if she suddenly starts throwing up blood as they are having fun. Jude arrives after Ethan is called to the crony cops' offices at some point, before bringing them to the lab Regina, the chief technology officer of the firm, tells them that Ethan can help them preserve humanity. As it happens, Richard created the Chronicle, a time machine that they are currently working on, 20 years ago. They have been testing it for a few minutes by sending a clock, but they have also sent radio waves and received a reply stating to send Ethan White 400 years in the future. Regina hypothesizes that Ethan is the only one who would receive the remedy for the illness which was discovered by individuals from the future. To be able to return, Ethan will need to track down the persons who sent the message, as the team is unsure of how to bring him back. Ethan and Jude head to a pub following the meeting, so that Ethan can consider Regina's suggestion. Jude makes the argument that leaving could save Zamp for years to come, even though Ethan doesn't want to leave her. Jude tries to bring up Richard, but Ethan tells him that his father vanished and left his eight-year-old kid with nothing but a strange wrist device and a self-deletion note. Ethan declines to do the same to Xanth because he believes that his mother would not have passed away if Richard had been alive. Jude believes that Ethan needs to help Xanth in order to avoid being like Richard. Following Jude's departure, Ethan reflects back to his eighth birthday. After waiting for his father all day, Richard finally showed up, and his gift was an odd box. He placed tiny Ethan's hand into the box and told him that one day he would have to make a crucial decision. Suddenly, the wrist of the little boy bled as an electronic wristband closed around it. Richard promised the boy that the bracelet would stay on, while he sobbed in agony and left the house against his wife's objections. Subsequently, Ethan is overcome with grief for his mother's passing and makes the decision to return home to inform Xanth of Chronocorp's scheme. Though Xanth begs him to have faith and not use her as a pretext to avoid helping humanity he still wants to abandon her. She expresses fear as she lists all the students in her class who have passed away. Later that night, as Ethan visits the rooftop to observe the city, he remembers the day his mother passed away on the streets and tries frantically to take off the bracelet. Jude discovered him that day and gave him his oxygen mask. Ethan screams in the present while he decides. Unaware that Xanth is indeed awake and in tears, Ethan leaves a metal flower for her the following morning and promises to return. Upon arriving to the crony cop's office, he strikes a bargain with Regina, promising not to leave until Xanth receives the first dosage of the medication. Regina agrees, and they head straight to the lab where Ethan is given instructions by the experts on how to use the unique suit in Archie, a tiny pocket computer. Jude also makes an appearance to offer his assistance and pledges to keep an eye on Xanther. When he's ready, Ethan enters the machine, and as soon as he does, electricity surrounds his body, and the machine releases a burst of energy that propels him into the future. When a hole appears in the sky, Ethan plummets rapidly until he lands in the middle of a jungle, whereupon he passes out right away. Ethan wakes up, sees his suit is burning, and crawls away from it just in time to prevent it from blowing up. Then, when the clean oxygen and sunshine help the vegetation to regrow throughout the area, Ethan's body needs some time to adjust. Ethan uses Archie to find his location, after taking some time to enjoy the scenery. But Archie is unable to establish a connection with any satellites. Ultimately, he releases a magnet into the Earth, enabling Archie to detect structures in the vicinity, and she directs Archie to the closest location. Ethan is shocked to discover a skeleton at the entrance with a hole in its skull, 
but he is even more shocked to see that the skeleton is dressed in the suit with his name, along with Richard's bracelet, which has a green light on it, he discovers a rusted Archie beneath the leaves, he panics because this indicates that he is going to die on this assignment, after he settles down, he tries in vain to open the facility's doors, and begs the rusting Archie to play the most recent tape, a gunshot is heard after two voices argue, and the machine plays a distorted voice, that says it's better this way, because no one will suffer anymore. At that point, the rusty Archie shuts down when the battery runs out, she eventually detects a beacon signal when Ethan wraps wire around his own Archie. After noticing that a wire is wrapped around the rusting Archie, he does this by taking some wire from his suit. Ethan sees two oxygen dispensers and no one else as he follows the signal through the jungle. With Archie's assistance, Ethan manages to build a fire later that evening however it takes some time. He also discovers some berries that Archie is unable to identify. After eating one, Ethan discards the others, since they are so bad tasting. Ethan then recalls how he and Richard used to study the skies together, when he begs Archie to use the constellations to verify that it is the year 2474. But as soon as Richard starts feeling ill, throwing up, and having hallucinations while a thunderstorm is raging overhead, the memory abruptly stops. As Ethan's hallucinations worsen, he witnesses a ball of light smashing close to his camp and sees a figure sprinting to stab him in the chest. After Ethan faints, he wakes up a short while later to find Jude, the mystery man, has given him an injection of medication to treat the poison he contracted from the berries. Jude tells us the following morning that Crony Corp was monitoring Ethan's vitals and saw he was dying. As a result Jude was sent for assistance by them using what power they had left on the Chronicle. Jude doesn't believe the skeleton that Ethan is showing her could be Ethan. They then utilize Archie to follow the signal till they locate a different facility that reads Ethan's eye and opens the door right away. With the exception of a flashing screen with Ethan's name, the interior is pitch black. His wrist bracelet activates and draws blood to analyze his DNA when he hits the enter key. Declaring he has a gun with him, Jude says he believes they are under attack. The bracelet's light abruptly turns green, and the computer turns on the lights. Now that Ethan's identity has been verified, the computer informs the two that the portal will open in four hours, and they are both surprised to learn that they are at Cronicorp's lab. Jude is happy, but Ethan is concerned since the skeleton's bracelet matches Jude's in color. Subsequently, Ethan examines the computer files and discovers a holographic recording made by Richard during his tenure at Cronicorp. According to Richard, when the air got breathable in the future, a monitoring station buried there would transmit data. The crew anticipated hearing back from 2474 in the following entry but all they got was the instruction to send Ethan White. Regina requested that the item be sent right away, but the report said that there was a power outage in 2474. Ethan is informed by the computer that there is a problem with the nuclear core power, as the lab system abruptly shuts down. When Ethan has Archie perform a diagnostic, they find that the power feed is tainted, which means they are unable to go back to 2067. Additionally, the computer alerts them to the possibility of a nuclear explosion, if they fail to resolve the problem before the countdown expires. Jude runs to gather tools, but Ethan is preoccupied thinking about the ramifications of what they've discovered. Cronycorp received the message long before they called him, indicating that they were aware of the power outage, and that it was set from here, indicating that they had repaired the location and discovered a solution. He questions Cronycorp's decision to send Jude rather than a medic in the event of a power outage, to which Jude responds that he was the sole volunteer. Jude then becomes nearly combative as he urges they start working on the repairs, while Ethan wants to assess their circumstances first. Jude calms himself and urges Ethan to acknowledge the gravity of the situation as he pulls back. Ethan consents to go to the access tunnel for repairs, as long as they locate the messages sender later. After making their way through the forest, the two arrive at the city which is shrouded in greenery and in ruins. Upon investigating the location, they discover numerous bones, and Ethan comes to the realization that no one lived in the year he was born. The Earth simply awaited human death before renewing itself. Concerned, they proceed to Xanth's school where they discover the pupils' skeletons, indicating that they perished there in the classroom. Ethan finds himself thinking that they won't succeed in the mission if there isn't somebody present to move the bodies. Then he discovers another skeleton that is Xanth holding the metal flower in her hand. Ethan is overcome with anguish as he recalls the evening Richard summoned them to meet somewhere, but the stranger who killed his mother and took Ethan's breathing mask followed them. Jude tracked down and saved Ethan, even though Richard never showed up. Jude calms Ethan down as he is having a panic attack due to the memories. Still believing that nothing can be changed, Ethan sobs and laments leaving Xanth alone. Ethan is shocked to hear Jude declare that they are better off because no one is hurting anymore as that is what he heard from the rusting Archie. When Ethan plays the tape again to make sure 
he discovers that Jude shoots him to end the quarrel. Jude pulls out his gun at that point, and Ethan questions why he has it, given that there isn't a fight going on. They argue for a while until Archie points out that the nuclear detonation has two hours remaining. Jude pulls Ethan into the tunnels, where they discover they must redirect the power, because the nuclear core has fried. As soon as their attempts to do so are unsuccessful, the computer tries to close the entrance for security. Jude uses a metal bar to stop it, but Ethan takes it out when he hears the computer say that the room needs to be depressurized, leaving Jude outside to save him. The oxygen purge is then turned on by Ethan, which brings back the power, but makes him pass out. In an attempt to save Ethan's life, a desperate Jude cracks the glass. After that, the two go back to the lab and discover they have just 37 minutes left until the gateway opens. Unexpectedly, Ethan opens a door and finds his skeleton there, which helps him comprehend that there is no turning back time. Ethan accuses Jude of plotting to shoot him while he swaps the batteries and the two Archies. The footage then shows Jude menacing Ethan with a rifle and urging him to defend himself. He then has the rusting Archie repeat the last thing the other Ethan saw. After Jude claims he has no intention of shooting Ethan, they argue, with Jude recommending they stay there but Ethan won't let everyone die. After that, Ethan breaks down another door to enter the utility room, where there aren't any masks. Jude maintains that they are unable to save everyone, but Ethan brushes Jude off and uses the computer to play a log he took on his seventh birthday. Richard apologizes, but Jude cuts the power before he can finish his sentence. Enraged, Ethan shuts off the power to complete seeing the message and locks Jude in the utility room. Richard contacted little Ethan's home and requested him to go for a stroll with his mother so they could meet. Richard stated he'd done everything for his kid and wanted to tell him so, but Regina and Jude came into the lab to corner him before he could go. Regina claimed that humans were the true infection, and that she intended to use the Chronicle to go to a future with a select number of elite individuals, giving up on finding a cure. Regina became enraged and pulled out a gun to ask one of the scientists if they could send at least one person to address the power problem. When Richard refused to cooperate and admitted that he had coded the system so that only Ethan could activate it in the future, Regina shot Richard once the scientist confirmed it could be done. The remainder of the truth is revealed at that point when Jude manages to escape and tries unsuccessfully to stop the recording. Regina commanded Jude to take on the role of Ethan's guardian and dispatched a squad to murder Ethan's mother. After Jude is accused of using him for his own gain all these years, a distraught Ethan leaps on him and they argue again about what to do next. Jude tackles Ethan and pushes him against the wall, while pleading with him to fight. When he begins removing cables, in an attempt to halt the chronicle, Jude pulls out his revolver and points it at Ethan's head after he refuses, but Ethan doesn't resist, saying he has faith in his brother. Jude feels guilty for meeting Ethan that night when he sees him in such agony. As a result, he apologizes to Ethan and then deletes himself. Regina gives a guard the order to kill Ethan as soon as they arrive in the future while she gets the elite group ready for their escape in the present. Returning to Ethan, he breaks down and reaches for Jude's hand, before realizing his mistake. When the computer responds to Regina's team's ping, he finally realizes that he is the one in the lab carrying out all of the tasks. At which point he formulates a strategy and composes the send Ethan White message. Regina watches the clock hit zero in the present, but the chronicle closes down as opposed to a gateway opening. A can, a film of Richard's murder, and a bunch of plants make up Ethan's gift to them within the machine. Ethan burns the chronicle in the future to ensure that it is never used again. Newscasts in the present will soon discuss Regina's arrest, as well as the ways in which scientists are collaborating with plants to initiate ecological restoration. Because Zant's name is on the can, a chronic cop employee gives it to her. When she opens it and finds a real flower, she sobs. Jude's body is buried beside the river in the future, and Ethan places the metal flower on the grave. Ethan runs back to the facility to find his skeleton gone after noticing a butterfly nearby and recalling what his father taught him about how everything in the cosmos is related via time. Ethan rushes through the forest to reach the city again excited about the potential improvements. This time, he finds that humanity has survived and created structures that harmoniously mix with the surroundings. 